call her an orange dream leopard dreamsicle. What's up, snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. And I hope you guys had a great weekend. It is Monday. We're gonna take a quick run into the snake room and we're gonna look at some really cool stuff. Might not be the longest video today because Monday sometimes are a little hectic, but uh, I know I have a really gravid bow I wanna take a look at. We got some ball pythons that are in breeding mode still. And you never know what else might strike my fancy. So let's head to, into the snake room. You tell me if you like today's video. And if you guys have any ideas for future videos, I told you, put them in the comments below or send them directly to me. Let's go see what we got. All right, a little off topic, maybe not uh, snakes or reptiles or even animals for that matter, but I had to show you guys this. I'm so proud of myself. I plant, you know, I bought a pineapple years ago and I took the top off of it. I put it in water, rooted it, grew it. And uh, I, I actually grew a pineapple. You're seeing two right now, but I grew a pineapple about three years ago. And then nothing, basically. And I continued, this is the pot I had it in the whole time. And, but these, you know, the pineapple leaves just kept growing and growing and growing. And I read somewhere that you only get pineapples every other year. Uh, but I, I missed, it must have missed a year. This year, I come outside and I have two. So one pineapple plant turned into two pineapple plants. And next thing you know, I will be dull pineapples. <laughs> Matter of fact, I went to the dull plantation in Hawaii. If you ever get a chance to go to Hawaii, it's kind of really cool. Pretty cool tour. They grow. They have hundreds and probably thousands of pineapple plants. But supposedly they don't they don't produce pineapples every year. It's like every other year or every third year. So really cool. I'm going to take, once these two pineapples are ready to go, I'm going to take them and pick them, and I'm going to take the little stem off the top there, and I'm going to root those, and I'm going to keep my pineapple crop increasing. I guess Florida is a good place to grow pineapples because they seem to really do well. You just got to make sure you really keep them watered. So pretty happy. All right. Albino water monitor at a time. This one's dirty. You're dirty. You got a shed. I've been rubbing her for about... 10 minutes now while talking to my friend Chase who's helping me clean uh, water bowls here. Going to clean. Sparkly clean for our albino water monitors. Yes, it is. Should I try Should I go for the lift? Oh, look at that. Look at that. And this is my uh, supposed female who's not quite as, um, as tame, but I think she's actually turning out to be uh, better than the male. She doesn't get moody. If she doesn't want to be picked up, she'll just go hide in the back someplace. But if she's into it, she doesn't get like all of a sudden, oh, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. She's really good with it. Look how beautiful that little girl is. All right, every, every couple days we're tracking this girl. She's back in the hot spot, waiting uncomfortably. There's, there's the, the daddy. Uh, will she have slugs in her? Will she have babies in her? That is the question we need answered. So far, I have never gotten a uh, live clutch from her. And once again, this year we moved her into the cold room or the colder room, and we're hoping that's gonna have, do the trick. But she's beautiful, obviously. She feels she feels a little mushy, which mushy is good. Mushy usually means there's babies in there. When they feel really tight, like, uh, and the, but yet they're still sitting on the hot spot. Usually that usually indicates slugs, at least to me. I don't know if everyone else feels that way, but that's usually the trend I see. So beautiful super fire. I think it's going to be another like two two weeks the most. All right, here's our sharp albino fire diamond that we bred to a fire diamond head sharp. Uh, I wasn't this, I've had these guys cohabitated for two years now and I've got nothing. Now I did move this, this girl and this boy to a big vision cage in my colder room, my Australian room, just like I did the super fire I just showed you. So I'm hoping, you know, maybe we get something, you know, maybe uh, this is the, the trick. She is sitting on the heat. Um, I don't know if I'm so sold on the fact that she's got babies in her, but she is on the heat and they don't usually like to sit on the heat always. So. And I didn't just feed her, so. 
So this could be a good sign. We'll have to just keep an eye on the situation and see uh, see what happens, you know? Hopefully uh, we have a bunch of uh, white snakes. That would be great. And if this one hits, we can get white snakes with red eyes because they would be albino super fire diamonds, which I've never produced. Well, I've never produced anything <laughs> with fire. So it would be cool to get both of them in there. That would be uh, really, really cool. All right, a little update on our Blue tongue skinks. This is our ivory. Some people call it a hypo. I got really lucky. Mine really, really stayed pretty pattern free. As it's getting older and it's getting bigger, it's 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 really, really white. It's got a beautiful bluish tongue. It's a little lighter than the, the normal ones, and pretty good. I was just saying how what a great personality this this guy's got. Although he just he did take a little chunk out of my hand before, but I think it was because I was I was talking and neglecting him. <laughs> really cool. One of my f favorite animals in my collection. My white blue tongue skink. It's really really nice. If I can get albino into this, holy mackerel! If I can only get the blue tongues to breed. I can't get my blue tongues to breed. And I don't. You know what the truth is? I don't even care. I just like to have them. I only I have about five of them, and I I'm, if I just kept them as pets just to play with them, I'd be happy. I would like to see if I can get them to breed, but it's not, it hasn't been in the cards for me so far. And I've done everything, I think I've done everything right. I've roommated them, woke them up, introduced them. No one wants to breed. All right, a little update. All right, I think, I think we got a nice lock here. I'm, this is my Super Blade Clown and She's looking really beefy, actually. I'm kind of happy, to be honest with you. And that's a super nanny, uh, that male. So we're gonna try to produce some um, blade nanny head clowns. So we can produce some nanny clowns next year, maybe, or the year after that. So we'll see how this turns out. Looks like they're definitely uh, liking each other. Good luck. All right, another good luck. From a GHI Hurricane Het Clown female we produced here in 20. Uh, she's a little on the small side, but she's she's definitely up, up to weight. And that's my GHI Mojave Pastel Clown male. And that that would be some, some pretty cool stuff. If we can produce some Hurricane Super GHI Clowns, now that would be cool. So we'll have to see. Obviously, she's head clown, so only 50% of the baby is going to be visual clowns, but potentially really good litter. And I put this um, male in with her because she's a you know a virgin. She's never bred yet for me, and he's really experienced. He's, he, he gets the job done, this guy. I, he's probably sired 100 clutches for me. No, probably like 50 clutches for me, probably, since I've got him. Great, great little boy. And we'll finish up with this gorgeous girl that I've shown you before. I, one of my favorite in the collection, I gotta be honest with you. I, and I didn't produce her. I got her in a trade. And she is a leopard. You can see that leopard gene right on the head. We get a really nice look. She's lavender albino. You can see that those purples there. She's orange dream. You can see the orange saturation here. And she's pied. So. Pie, lavender pies are known as dreamsicles, so you, we can technically call her an orange dream leopard dreamsicle. Really, really pretty. This is, I mean, this is, there's really not much you can make to, do to make this better, to be honest with you. I mean, there's a couple things we can throw in here, but this is pretty spectacular in and of itself. And uh, I, I just love, love having her just because she's so beautiful. Really nice. Look at this girl. Splendor into the video here. She's almost got like uh, look at these little white dots here. Kind of cool. Very cool. I love her head. Head is great. See all that little lavender purples in there. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. Hope you liked today's video. We had that super fire diamond 
<laughs> wow, it looks like she's going to explode. I, you know, I, I pray every day that she, that she has, there's a couple things I pray for in my collection. I pray that my olive python will have a clutch of eggs this year. Uh, I only saw one lock from them, but it, that's one lock more than I usually see. And you know, they've been outside. So I, I pray for that every day. I also pray for my super fire diamond that, that I get some uh, leucistic boas. I have never produced any. Uh, if I can crack that nut and uh, and figure it out and then validate the fact that maybe I was just keeping them too warm and that those amaralli boas just need to be colder, that would make me feel really like, that would make me feel like I actually know what I'm doing or at least I have a little bit more knowledge than I thought I had. So that that's really cool. And of course, you know, water monitor training continues, blue tongue skink training continues, and it's all fun here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. If you guys like what you see, make sure to hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications, hit that like button. I'll see you back tomorrow morning.